Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel Rosehill Plus on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosehill. I've been meaning for some time to record a video about what I've been doing professionally for about the past year. More specifically, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's been like doing communications work on behalf of an individual. I think that it's an interesting trajectory within the broader world of communications jobs and I thought that some thoughts might be of interest. Since February of 2022, I've been helping Sir Ronald Cohen with communications. My specific job title is communications manager, although what I do includes a mixture of video work, social media, media monitoring and book promotion. Sir Ronald prefers to be addressed as Ronnie, so I'll do so here when referring to him. Ronnie spent a career working in venture capital before turning his focus towards something called impact investing. He's published a book which has been translated into 11 languages worldwide and he speaks regularly at events about sustainable investing on podcasts and more. Before beginning my work with Ronnie, I spent a career working in marketing communications. I worked at two tech startups before working independently for a few years as a contractor. I focused mostly in the world of technology and worked with quite a variety of companies as well as PR companies, generalist marketing agencies and occasionally non-profits. I focused mostly on working with cybersecurity, although I also did some work with companies in the world of backup and recovery, fintech and Linux. In university, I actually studied law, although I got interested in writing and journalism early on in my degree, and I've been sort of rolling with that ever since. Outside of work, I love traveling, I create content for a YouTube channel, and I'm also interested in learning languages. I have some more uh, niche interest too. I began working with Sir Ronald through the usual strange coincidence of timing and opportunity. I happened to be thinking about transitioning back towards a more substantial position at about the same time he was looking for a communications person. In terms of preparation for providing communication services to an individual, I don't think there are really any specific requirements. However, I do believe that working or studying journalism provides, in general, an excellent foundation for any kind of career in communications. The context of the work I do for Sir Ronald is very different than working for an IoT company, which I did before, but the core communication skills I draw on remain roughly the same. The first thing to say about doing communications and PR on behalf of an individual is that I believe it's a pretty rare opportunity. The reason for that is pretty self-explanatory. The vast majority of people don't have a requirement for professional communication services, whether those are provided by a PR agency, a full-time employee, or a contractor. However, there are of course exceptions to every rule and for those who are frequently called upon to speak at events, who manage personal brands and they're generally in the public eye, a communication service can be a necessary fact of life. Another commonality that I believe probably holds true for most people requiring support from communications practitioners is that those individuals tend to be extremely busy. The key skill I've been working on developing in my work with Sir Ronald is the art of briefing. I may have 30 minutes to meet virtually with Ronnie before working on projects for him for the next few days or even for a week. Therefore, it's pretty imperative that I come organized to meetings with a prepared agenda and I take accurate notes of his instructions. This is good because it also helps to keep me organized and focused over the coming days. Practically speaking, technology is a great help. Sometimes I ask Ronnie for permission to record or video meetings or conversations and I can refer back to these later but most of the time I'm just typing notes furiously on my keyboard. Whether I'm writing things on the back of a napkin in a Google Drive document or going low tech and sending myself an email, the most important thing I've realized is that I just get a good version of the minutes jotted down. Having given you a sense of how I started this job and what I do, let me try to touch on some of the pros and cons of this kind of work. The biggest pro of providing communication services to people, in my opinion, is getting to work with some great minds and thinkers. This applies as much to Ronnie as some of the folks running startups that I've also had the privilege of working for. Whatever the context of the specific position, I think of my job as being very similar to that of a translator. I try to take the thinking and agenda of who I'm working for and find the best ways of connecting that to an audience. Often this can require becoming immersed in their professional vocabulary and world. Sometimes people become so close to the source material that they lose sight of what might be interesting to an outside audience or readership. Other times, and for the same reasons, they might not see the importance of parts of their work or happenings in their industry. These are the areas where I try to make myself useful. In the case of Ronnie's work, the motivation for the work is philanthropic. His goal is to promote the adoption of impact investment and some very specific means of achieving that. Supporting those goals in turn becomes my job description. 
So while I take plenty of direction, I also spend a lot of time watching financial media and thinking how I might be able to inject his perspective and thinking into those debates. Personally, I enjoy the challenge of this a lot more than being tasked with something more simple like having to come up with a blog post every week. I also enjoy listening to podcasts and watching YouTube channels and I've come up to really enjoy getting a sense for debates and opportunities for comments that might not be obvious at first glance. A similar position to working for an individual might be providing communication support to a higher ranking executive at a large corporation who is also tasked with a lot of public speaking and commentary giving. This type of work might commonly be described as executive communications. The work is similar to the kind of services I provide for Ronnie and I'm beginning to think of these jobs as the hidden part of the communications job landscape that many people don't know even exists. There are some pros and cons I'd like to touch on as well. The defining feature of working with an individual is that it's going to be a close personal relationship. Therefore, maintaining a healthy working relationship with your client becomes really important. Another specific aspect of this context of work is that you're working for an individual rather than a company. You may have only one colleague or none at all. You may work remotely for long stretches of time. There may be no office other than your boss's home or a co-working space. Again, these are peculiarities of the job that may be positives or drawbacks, depending upon your preferences and temperament. Downsides might be the requirement to sometimes work irregular hours. Because you're working for an individual, the working tempo may be largely dictated by his or her personal schedule. This could change suddenly, or you could find yourself having to work on social hours to overlap with different time zones. Overall though, I would say that working as a communications manager on behalf of an individual has been a very interesting experience. It's allowed me to fill in some gaps in my skills as a professional communicator and it's exposed me to part of the world of communication that many don't know even exists. If you have questions or you'd like to reach out to me by email, I'd be happy to answer them if I have time. Thanks for watching.